Welcome back to Heroes of the Faith, a show where we are inspired by the lives of the saints so that we can become saints ourselves. I'm your host, Isaac Longworth, and today I want to tell you the story of Saint Genevieve. Saint Genevieve is truly a fascinating woman. She is someone who had very strong prophetic gifts from God, and God would use her at many different points to save her people from the attacks of hostile armies which were threatening their very lives. She's an amazing saint and I think she can really teach us how we also can be called by God to use our prophetic gifts to help others and to build them up in the faith. Well, Saint Genevieve was born in Nanterre, France around the year 419. This was a time when that region of France was still part of the Roman Empire. Now the empire itself had been a source of stability in that region of Europe for hundreds of years, right? The Roman Empire had had a strong military, had had a good infrastructure, people had lived in peace. But now the empire at this point in history was falling apart due to the infighting amongst Roman leaders and there was many outside attacks happening in the empire from many different barbarian tribes that had been chipping away at the peace. The city of Rome itself had been sacked and burned only a few years earlier. And so it was a very violent and uncertain time that Genevieve was born into. She was raised in a Catholic family from a very early age. And even as a child, she was trained by her parents how to pray to God. And throughout the day, she would talk with him. And she was very curious about her faith, even from the time she was a little child. Now, when she was still young, maybe around nine years old, Uh, her parents took her to a mission that was being preached at their church. And this mission was being preached by a famous bishop named Bishop Germanus. Now, Bishop Germanus is also a saint. Maybe I'll do a show on him sometime in the future. But Saint Germanus was on a preaching tour going from France all the way out to England. And he was making a stop in Genevieve's hometown. Now, during his preaching of the mission, the holy bishop looked out at the crowd and he noticed that little Genevieve was paying very close attention to all the words he was saying. Even as a nine-year-old, she was really listening intently, which he noticed from his position. And so after the homily, he met privately with her family. And he talked with Genevieve and she told him that she wanted to serve God somehow with her whole life. And when the bishop heard this, he asked her, well, Genevieve, have you ever heard of women who are consecrated virgins for God? And she said, no. And so the bishop explained to her that this was a beautiful life where you could become a consecrated virgin, which is a woman who gives herself completely to Jesus and promises to take no husband in this life so that she can focus on loving Jesus totally. It's kind of like a spiritual marriage where the consecrated virgin becomes a bride of Jesus. And she's able to love him in a beautiful way that other people aren't able to. And as he was explaining this to Genevieve, she said, well, Bishop Germanus, that sounds like something I would like to do when I'm older. And as they were talking, Bishop Germanus received a prophetic word from God for this girl that he was speaking to. Now, a prophetic word, maybe you haven't heard what that is before. It's a new phrase. Basically, it's a word from God that God gives to you to be able to share with someone about their situation, about their life, about their future. It's something that needs to be carefully thought about and discerned before you share it because it's a skill to be able to hear God's voice. But he does want us to hear his voice. He wants to be able to speak to us. And so when we become accustomed to hearing God's voice, God is able to give us messages or prophetic words for ourselves And also for others. And that's what was happening with Bishop Germanus. God gave him a prophetic word about the life of Genevieve. Now, wisely, the bishop didn't tell Genevieve the entirety of what God was saying about her. Because she was only nine, he wanted to be prudent about this. And so he went and told her parents what he thought God was saying. And he told her parents, this girl will live a life of great holiness great saintliness. She will become someone who is consecrated to Jesus as his bride and not only her own life, but she will bring many other young women to become consecrated to God as virgins. And so the bishop encouraged Genevieve to keep praying 
to stay close to Jesus. And the very next morning, he met with the family one final time where he gave Genevieve a medal with a cross on it. And he told her to wear it around her neck. And he encouraged her to let that medal remind her that one day she would be consecrated totally to the love and service of Jesus as one of his consecrated virgins, as a bride of Christ. Now, after this point, Genevieve wanted desperately to join a convent, to start living as a consecrated virgin. She wanted to choose not to marry anyone so that Jesus alone could be her intimate companion. But there was not a convent close by for her to join. And so she continued to live with her parents, to grow in her life of prayer, just like the bishop had told her to. But when she was a young teenager, both of her parents died. And so she was sent to live with her godmother who lived in the city of Paris. And Paris was a much bigger city than her hometown. And there was many more convents in the area of Paris to choose from. And so when Genevieve was about 16 years old, she joined one of these communities and consecrated her life to Jesus as a consecrated virgin. And she loved this new life. She loved the fact that she now could live completely for Jesus as his bride. And she spent many long hours in prayer talking with her beloved Jesus. But she also liked the active part of her life. She loved to go out with the other consecrated women to do their service to the poor in the city of Paris. And Genevieve tried to cut out all of the earthly pleasures in her life so that she could focus solely on God, solely on the things of heaven. And so, for instance, Genevieve cut out all meat from her diet. She fasted from meat for her whole life, and she only ate twice a week because she wanted that physical hunger to remind her of the spiritual hunger that she had for more of the love of Jesus, her spouse. In fact, her fasting, though, got so severe that one of her superiors thought that she might accidentally hurt her health because of how little food she was eating. And so her superior said, look, Genevieve, I know you're trying to do the right thing, but you actually have to eat more. I'm commanding you under obedience to eat more food. And she was obedient to them, which is a good lesson for all of us when we are trying to become saints, to imitate Saint Genevieve in this, that sometimes even saints can get carried away by temptations to be extreme. But it's always important to be obedient. That true holiness comes from being obedient because that's actually the hardest thing. The hardest thing is not going without food or, or praying for long hours. The hardest thing is being obedient to those who God allows to be put in authority over us. And so that's what St. Genevieve was doing. She was obedient to them. And she became, as she was practicing this life of prayer, practicing this life of living completely for Jesus, she became more accustomed to hearing God's voice in prayer. The more she prayed, the better she got at hearing the voice of God. And she began to even have visions from God. Angels and saints from heaven would come and appear to her and they would speak to her as you and I would talk to a friend. That is how Genevieve was able to talk with God and the angels and the saints and, and the blessed mother. And they would come to her and they would tell her things that were going to happen to her and to give her directions on what she was supposed to do. And when she would tell others about the messages she was getting, people were amazed when the things that God had told her actually started to come true, just like she said it would. One of the most powerful examples of this is when the city of Paris was being threatened by the armies of the dreaded Attila the Hun. Attila the Hun was a barbarian leader who had come out of the east and was terrorizing all of Europe. He gave himself the nickname the Scourge of God because he was so barbaric, so violent, and he loved to attack Christian towns. The Huns were truly a terrifying army. They were burning and killing every city in their path. Um, they practiced this process where they would bind their heads with cords when they were infants so their heads would be shaped differently so that they would be more terrifying to their enemies. They were masters of torture and warfare. And to the Christians, they seemed barely human. And so they were terrified of this army. And this army of Huns was coming straight for the city of Paris. 
And so there was terror and panic in the streets. The people were packing up whatever belongings they could into carts and trying to flee out of the city, trying to escape the ravaging horde of Huns that was coming. But Genevieve alone remained calm. And she told the people of Paris, God has told me that if we don't run away, but if we stay behind and pray constantly, he will save the city from Attila. And this seemed insane to the people of Paris. Why wouldn't Attila attack? Why would he change his course just because of prayer? But Genevieve was insistent, and she organized the whole city into round-the-clock prayer for God to save the city, to deliver the people of Paris from the attack of the Huns. And the people trusted her. And they began to pray and they didn't leave the city as they were tempted to. And inexplicably, Attila and his bloodthirsty army changed direction. They completely routed around the city of Paris and didn't attack it, leaving it in peace. And so this was just one example of Genevieve's prophetic words from God being used to save the people of Paris from attack. Genevieve also had a powerful gift of healing that people began to notice. During her ministry to the poor, she would pray for those who were sick, those who were injured, and they would be miraculously cured. Now, obviously, because of this, most people were grateful that God was using this holy woman to speak prophetic words to them, to help them be healed of their illnesses. But as is always the case, some people were jealous of her. They were jealous of Genevieve and they began to spread rumors that she was a fraud, that she was making up all of these so-called prophetic words, that these messages from God that she said she was getting were actually just being used by her to make her look holier than them. And they said, no, she's a hypocrite. She actually isn't getting anything. She's just making all of this up to look good in front of us. And the more people spread these rumors, the more people began to believe them. They began to believe these envious lies, and they began to regard Genevieve as suspicious, and some of them even thought that she was dangerous. And so there was actually a plot from some of these deluded people to attack her as a mob and drown her in a nearby lake. That's how much the rumors had had an impact on people. But when the bishop heard about this scheme to drown Genevieve, he rushed down to the city to put an end to their threats. And so there was no more danger for her physically because of the bishop's command not to touch her, but many people would still distrust Genevieve and her prophetic gifts for the rest of her life. But through it all, Genevieve didn't back down. She didn't back down out of fear of protecting her own life or even the fear of embarrassment because people thought she was a fraud and a hypocrite and a false prophet. Even when they openly mocked and slandered her, she didn't let it get under her skin. She just kept being faithful to God and sharing with people the prophetic words that God was sharing with her. She was obedient to her spouse Jesus, not to what others thought about her. Her holiness and her wisdom became so well known in the city that the Bishop of Paris put her in charge of all of the consecrated virgins in the entire city. And in this, the prophetic word that Bishop Germanus had spoken over her when she was a child came to fruition. She was living a holy life. She was a consecrated virgin. And now she was in charge of leading the other consecrated virgins of the city closer to Jesus in holiness and prayer. And so she coached all of these women how to fall more deeply in love with Jesus, how to hear his voice during prayer, just like she did. And the young women, the consecrated virgins, appreciated her motherly care, appreciated her advice, and they were inspired by her example of how she lived her life as a bride of Christ. And so they really imitated her and modeled their lives after her, growing closer to Jesus. However, the peace of Paris was soon threatened again, this time not by the Huns, but by a Germanic tribe of pagans called the Franks. And the Franks laid siege to the city of Paris. They surrounded the city and cut off all supply routes. And the Franks' idea with this was to basically starve the people of Paris into submission, to not allow any food to come in until they got weaker and weaker and eventually the city would fall. 
And so Genevieve realized just how scary the situation was for her people. And so she led a contingent of boats outside of the city that sailed up the river, was able to slip by the Franks and collect grain from storehouses that were further away from the city and bring them back to Paris. And when she got back to Paris with this food throughout the whole siege, Genevieve worked tirelessly for the poor citizens. She made sure that the meager supplies in the city were being distributed fairly, that those who were stronger weren't stealing more food from those who were weaker or who had less influence. Uh, Genevieve nursed the sick and the wounded back to health who had been injured in battle. And she brought hope to the people of Paris. She would come to their homes and pray with them. She would point out to them that even though this siege looked hopeless, that we aren't made for this life, that happiness in this life is never guaranteed, but that we are living for the happiness of heaven. And she kept pointing them to God and encouraging them to pray for the safety of the city and the salvation of all of the lives in it. Eventually, she even took it upon herself to be one of the ambassadors for the city. She would leave the safety of the walls and go out to the Frankish camp and negotiate for the safety of captives who had been captured in battle. And because of her influence over the Frankish leaders, many of the captives who had been taken in battle had their lives spared. They weren't executed by the Franks, but they were able to return safely because of the negotiations of Genevieve. Well, eventually the Franks did conquer the city of Paris. And the Frankish king knew that Genevieve was someone different. He had never met a woman quite like her. And he had so much respect for this brave Christian lady that he listened to her advice when she told him, don't let your soldiers sack the city. Normally in that time, when troops had done a long siege and they finally broke through the walls, the leader would let them do whatever they wanted. They would go from house to house, burning, killing, looting, doing whatever they wanted as a kind of reward for the long siege. But Genevieve pleaded with him, don't let your soldiers destroy the city. And so the, the Frankish king listened to her. He reined his troops in and they took the city with as little life lost as possible. And even after the city was taken by the Franks, Genevieve continued to act as an advisor to the Frankish kings, even though they weren't Christian, even though they were pagans who worshipped their own uh, gods, their false gods and idols, they recognized the love and the wisdom of Genevieve and they wanted to listen to her advice. Eventually, one of the Frankish kings actually converted to Christianity, no doubt due in part to the influence and the prayers and the evangelization of Genevieve, who had been serving the Frankish kings as one of their advisors for many years. Now, the king who had converted to Christianity even went so far as to build a beautiful church in honor of St. Peter and Paul. And Genevieve, who was at this point an elderly woman in her late 80s, she encouraged this work. She wanted the king to build this church because she knew that the public conversion and the devotion of the king to the true God would inspire many other Franks to leave behind their false gods and follow Jesus. And she was right. Because of the conversion of the king, because he was so outward in showing his devotion for his new faith by building a church, many different Franks left behind their false gods and turned to follow Christ. And so after a long service of life to the people of Paris, living out her life as a consecrated virgin, as a faithful bride of Christ, Genevieve herself died at the ripe old age of being in her early 90s. She lived a long and full life, and she had lived her life completely full of love for Jesus. While she was on earth, she had served him and devoted herself to him as his bride, and now she could finally see her beloved one face to face for all of eternity in heaven. Now, one thing that really stands out to me about the life of St. Genevieve is how God can use people to actually speak his word to others. It's this amazing thing that the gift of prophecy that she used was not just for people in the Bible, but God wants to give his gift of prophecy at every time in every age in the church. And we saw this all throughout the life of Genevieve. 
Genevieve had a prophetic word spoken over her by the bishop when he recognized that God had a plan for her life, that she would become a great saint, a consecrated virgin who would lead many other women into relationship with him. Throughout her life, Genevieve heard God's voice in prayer, and she even saw images from heaven that allowed her to direct people into what the right thing to do was, like organizing the city of Paris into prayer efforts to be saved from the Huns. And so we can imitate Genevieve in this, because if you're listening and you have been baptized, then you have been given gifts by God. If you are a Christian, you have been given gifts by God. Now, we don't all have the same gifts, but we are all supposed to desire every single gift that God gives. We're not supposed to be selective like, okay, God, I only want some of your gifts. And that includes the gift of prophecy. In fact, in the Bible, St. Paul says that Christians should desire prophecy even more than other gifts. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1, Paul says, earnestly desire the spiritual gifts especially that you may prophesy. So Christians are supposed to to desire the gift of prophecy, and we can practice this gift of hearing God's word by first learning to hear his voice for ourselves, what he's saying about us, before we then learn how to share his words, his prophetic messages with other people. Because prayer is a conversation. When we go into prayer, yes, we are talking with God, absolutely. But we are also supposed to hear back from him. It's a conversation. And so that implies that we can hear God's voice, which is exactly what Jesus said would happen. In John chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus speaking about his sheep, which symbolizes all of us. He said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So we can hear Jesus's voice in our prayer. God can speak to us in so many different ways. He can speak to us through actual words, either words that we hear in our imagination, which is a tool that God gave us so that he can speak to us through his inspiration, or like St. Genevieve, actually audibly hearing the voice of God. Now, I experienced this gift of prophecy being used in my own life just yesterday. I was on my way to confession with a priest that I had never met before, and As I was preparing for confession, I was really complaining to the Lord about the fact that I felt so guilty, so terrible for having to confess the same sins over and over every time I come to confession. I don't know if that's something that you've noticed, but I've certainly noticed in my own life. It's like I have the same sins over and over again, every confession. Well, when I went into the confessional, the priest was praying out loud to the Holy Spirit, asking him, for guidance in how to help the next person who came in. And so after my confession, the priest started to give me advice and he began to say words that was if he had been hearing my prayer before confession the entire time. He was sharing things that there was no way he could have known that that was what was in my heart coming into that confession. That was an example of that priest being used by God to share a prophetic word with me. He was sharing things that he did not know about me, but that were speaking exactly to what I had been praying to God about beforehand, things that he had no knowledge of. Now, that's just one small example of how God can use ordinary Christians to be able to speak prophetic words into the lives of others, like that priest spoke into my life during that confession. And God wants to be able to speak through all of us to others. He wants all of us to be able to hear his voice. But as we're learning how to do this, we need to acknowledge that our prophecy is probably not going to be perfect right away. It's a skill to learn how God speaks to us in prayer. And so when you're sharing prophetic words with someone, don't be absolute. You know, don't walk up to people and say, God told me definitely for sure that this is going on in your life. Maybe go up to someone and say, look, I think in prayer, God was telling me this. Does that make sense to you? So be respectful of others. Be prudent in how you share these words with people. Uh, In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 9, Paul cautions people, even though he tells them to desire to prophesy, he also cautions them that 
our prophecy is imperfect. We're learning how to hear God's voice. Even in the story of Genevieve, the bishop didn't tell her right away his prophecy because she was so young. He gave it to her parents first to see if it would come true as she got older. And a good rule, a good test for giving prophetic words is what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 3. He says, someone who prophesies speaks to men for their upbuilding, their encouragement, and their consolation. So before you're sharing a word that you think God has given you in prayer for someone, test that. Is it upbuilding? Is it encouraging? Is it something that will bring consolation to the other person? Now, that doesn't mean that all of prophetic words are just kind of these vague niceties that we say that don't really have any substance. Remember, Genevieve, her prophetic words made people so angry that they wanted to drown her, right? But she was always still speaking in love, even when she was prophesying. And so we need to be able to imitate her in that in order to become saints, just like she was. So let's pray for that right now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Saint Genevieve, we ask that just like you, we would be able to hear God's voice in prayer, not only for ourselves, but also so that like you, we can speak prophetically into the lives of those around us to encourage them, to build them up, and to console them in their walk with God. Saint Genevieve, You were obedient to your spiritual leaders, even when they asked you to do things that maybe didn't make sense to you right away or that you didn't agree with. Help us to also be obedient to our spiritual leaders, to imitate you in that in order to become truly holy in doing what is most difficult, putting aside our own preferences and being obedient to those who God has given us as our leaders. St. Genevieve, I pray right now for any women who are consecrated virgins throughout the world. And I pray for any woman who is listening in right now, who is feeling after hearing about your life, a call to give her life to Jesus, just like you did in a more total way to become a bride of Christ. St. Genevieve, pray for us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.